hello guys in this lecture we will see what compound stress and strain are till now we have dealt with situations in which the stresses are either normal to the plane like this these are called direct or normal stresses or we have seen situations where the stress is parallel to the surface these are called shear stresses but in many instances you can you can have both direct stress as well as shear stress on the plane okay so we will not have a resultant direct or a tangential stress but you'll have a resultant stress which will be at an angle phi to the normal on the plane which it acts okay let this angle be phi so this resultant will be equal to sigma square plus tau square as we all know and the angle tan phi is equal to tau by sigma so this angle will be phi tan inverse tau by sigma okay so we earlier took situations like we had a bar which was in simple tension so any section which is parallel to the plane on which the stress is acting it will have normal stresses sorry a b okay so any other plane which is at an angle to this plane let this angle be theta and this plane be ac so this ac plane let me draw this again magnified view this ac plane will not have just normal stress sigma but it will also have a shear let this be tau ac this will be sigma ac in this lecture we will see what sigma ac and tau ac are how to calculate these values so let's take this triangle a b c a b and c now on this plane we have stress sigma on this plane bc we have no stress and we know here we can have stress sigma ac and tau ac sigma ac tau ac to calculate these unknowns sigma ac and tau ac we just have to use two equations one of them is sigma fx equal to 0 and other one is sigma fi equal to 0 these are nothing but equilibrium equations okay so first of all this equation suggests that forces in x direction if this direction is x and this direction is y the forces in x direction the summation of all the forces in x direction should be equal to 0 now these are not forces these are stresses so what we have to do to convert these into forces we have to multiply the area on which these stresses are acting so instead of visualizing it as 2d let's visualize it as a 3d wedge okay obviously it is a 3d object so instead of the stress is acting on a line it would be acting on an area okay so the area here if the angle is theta this angle is theta this length would be ab by ac will be equal to sin theta so the length ab will be equal to ac sin theta and 
this sorry this length BC and this length BC is equal to AC sine theta and length AB will be equal to AC cos theta okay now we have lengths these lengths and let the thickness of this bar or this wedge be T okay and we shall draw this again we have a triangular wedge okay this is length A this is length C and this is length B your AB was AC cos theta your BC was AC sin theta and this let this be D and E and let this point be F now BD was equal to T so and stresses acting on this was sigma AC and this was tau AC and here the stresses were sigma and this angle will be theta this is 90 degree so this angle will be 90 minus theta this is x direction this is y direction so if we do summation fx equal to 0 we'll have components of two forces a force due to sigma ac and a force due to tau ac now the force due to sigma ac is sigma ac is sigma ac first of all we have to get the forces which is equal to stress into the area on which it is acting now sigma ac is acting upon the area a c e f so area will be length a c into length e c which is equal to b d or thickness so this is the force due to sigma a c and the component of this along the x direction will be cos of 90 minus theta the other force which will have a component in x direction is tau ac which will be equal to tau ac it will have the same area because it's acting on the same plane it will be equal to ac into t into sine uh, sorry cos of theta cos of theta okay and it's acting in opposite direction so we'll have a minus sign and then this is equal to 0 okay now we have an equation here AC T AC T gets cancelled out Sigma AC sine theta is equal to tau AC cos theta this is your first equation and write this again uh, sigma ac sine theta is equal to tau ac cos theta this is your first equation which comes from summation fx equal to zero then we have another equation which will come from summation fy equal to zero now we have sigma ac component in y direction which is equal to sigma ac into ac into t which is an area of the plane multiplied by sine of 90 minus theta then another component of tau ac which is acting in the same direction the upward direction tau ac into ac into t into sine of theta is 
sine of theta. Then we have another force acting in y direction due to this sigma. Okay, so this will mean downward direction. So it's minus sigma into AB and then thickness BD is equal to T. This is the area. This is equal to 0. Now we had AC. Now AB is equal to AC cos theta. So this AC T gets cancelled out and we have sigma AC cos theta plus tau AC sin theta minus sigma cos theta equal to 0. This is our second equation. Okay. Now, by solving these two equations, we'll get sigma AC equal to sigma cos square theta and tau AC is equal to sigma sin theta cos theta. So, these equations are very simple equations. These are linear equations. You can substitute value of sigma AC from this equation into this equation and can get the value of tau AC as sigma sin theta cos theta then you can easily get the value of sigma AC by substituting tau AC in this first equation so this will be the task for you to solve these two equations till then bye